Extraordinario. Me impresiona mucho. Pues sabes que yo creo que no es tanto el físico, es más bien la personalidad que tiene y todo lo que proyecta. Ya me lo imagino con su smoking blanco, un martini en una mano y un costoso abano en la otra. Provocativo. Atractivo. <risa> A new stereophonic sound spectacular. Hello there, and welcome to the exciting world of hip. This is a new departure in language instruction. For English-speaking people who want to talk to and be understood by jazz musicians, hipsters, beatniks, juvenile delinquents, and the criminal fringe. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, monsieur. Nous allons, grâce à ce disque créé spécialement pour vous, essayer de tirer ensemble le maximum de qualité sonore de votre chaîne haute fidélité. Sit back, relax, or close your eyes. No, no, no. Au contraire, open your eyes, guys. Open your eyes like you'll open your mind, like you would like to be open to uncover new ways and put people first, which is your client if you have a business, and then your employee if you still have a business. And if you're a consultant like me, put everyone, every stakeholders first before anything else. And then you will be able to claim that you are true agile. So welcome to this Their Real Agile special, special series that we're going to do in honor to my great friend and master, the one and only Mike Beadle, Miguel Beadle, who taught me everything, everything in Scrum, in Enterprise Scrum, and sparked me into business agility about 10 years ago now. First time I kind of met him virtually, uh, 2014 already, yeah. And uh, first time in person in a lounge in New York in uh, 2016. It's amazing. It was probably my greatest uh, encounter in my business and scrum career. I will say that much. You're terribly missed, Mr. Beetle, and now from wherever you are in this universe and space, you might be looking at myself with Suryu, with Daniel Mizik, some others, and you will say, what the heck are they trying to do? But that's the thing. That's the thing, beautiful people. So welcome once again. This is also the 100, I guess, is it? Let me see. Yes, this is the 139 Friday Life Agile on this Friday, the first Friday of February, um, to, um, to like Mike used to say, awake, awake your spirit, awake your craftsmanship, or your craftswomanship, if you like, and agilize everything. And now you're going to do this with me, AF, that stands for who I am, it's Alexandre Frédéric Joly, your coach F. But today I'm more Alexandre Frédéric, or, or, as we are in 2024, my year of Renaissance, the four Renaissance that I propose to the civil, is it Frédéric? They're going to rebirth the spring. So stay tuned because AFJ might be my great holding group of companies and trademark to help you in diverse domain that you could discover my six domain of professional services at jollyaf.com and am i live this friday friday what again february the 9 the new moon and i don't even remember for our um, people on this planet earth who are celebrating uh, the lunar year, if it's this new moon, for most of our Chinese people, friend in Thailand, I think the Philippines. And so tell me in the comment below. I don't know everything, uh, but maybe you could tell me. And, um, and that's it. Also, if you'd like to inspire someone or to uh, propage 
propage this authenticity, this transparency, this real empirical and everything that I'd like to share with you every Friday at noon Eastern, most of the time. It's noon Eastern, 11 Central for our folks in Texas and in the Midwest, for that matter. Uh, so share this video. It's going to be greatly appreciated. And um, of course, still, it's about almost 80% of you, especially on Rumble and YouTube, who are watching this transmission and you are not subscribed. So subscribe, hit the bell and the glove uh, to make the algorithm lie that apparently you don't like it, but you do. You seem to like it, but it's really important to help me. That's the only thing, if you'd like to help me continue. It's been almost three years I'm doing this. Um, both the podcasts, They're Real Agile, and this Friday Live Agile uh, during my exile in Tulum, Mexico, where I start with a check-in, and it became a kind of a ritual uh, with guests and everything. And speaking of guests, uh, the official monthly podcast of the Dairy Real Agile uh, will welcome a very special guest, a real great sister of mine from New York City, uh, to talk about something very innovative. So I won't say that much because it's going to be recorded very soon and it's going to be dropped out on every platform, audio platform, from Spotify all the way to Amazon Prime, iHeartRadio, Deezer, 36 platform, audio platform of your choice. You are now apparently, selon my statistics, you are about 7,000 listeners and and the six, almost 6,000 subscriber. I thank you very much for that. Really appreciate it. And uh, now your next step says, pay me a coffee. I love coffee. And yes, tonight, I don't have any of my trademark. I got my secret club, the Black Lodge from Twin Peak, 1990. Mm. And if you wonder, if you're live at 12 noon, Coach F, oh, it is so kind of dark like a midnight in the sky or when we say when we order our coffee from the Black Lodge and you say to the waitress, I'm drinking it, black as midnight on a moonless night. That's the new moon today, Friday, the 9, where we watching it together live. But yes, authentically, transparently, I'm recording it somewhere, nowhere, and between space and time, and between Manhattan and the great southwest of Montreal, and to my mini travel for work, work serving my client on both sides of the border. So that's why I have to do this, because I'd like to keep the pace, like in Scrum, consistency. The real Scrum, do that. And uh, But we do it with quality. Quality is a key. And Scrum, your definition of done is a key. But I have a promise now. I've got an average watch on Friday and the weekend after, on especially on YouTube and Rumble, once again. Linked out, I couldn't care less anymore. And again, linked out, you're going to be ready because it's been a while and I'm saying it. And c'est Frédéric that's coming. So it's going to be really big, big change. Yes, brig, 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 not big, brig, brig change. Like my Scottish friends touch me like trust. Brett with me, Brett with me, and brig change. So today, for this 139 Friday Live Agile and this special edition of the audio podcast, Their Real Agile, I'm going to start to read online, live or recorded for live, like today. For a starter, my favorite, my favorite article of Mike Beadle that he published mainly on Medium, and sometimes he shared it with, with us into some kind of special forum. So that's going to be like very peaceful. And for those who don't like to read or don't like to, and you prefer to do your jogging or your workout or what have you, maybe cooking. Some people start writing me that they cook listening to podcasts like mine. So now you're going to learn a couple of things about the real through business agility 
uh, that was like co-create by Mike Beadle and uh, I cannot press it anymore. So without further ado, let's start this first special episode of reading you. Uh, for a starter, my favorite article. And today, as you probably saw in the title already, it's nine agilities for true business agility by my dear Mike Beadle. And um, of course, as this is multimedium, I'm doing it, as I said, Rumble and YouTube in a little bit of this uh, fading, faking LinkedIn linked out. Still there for a moment. And um, But if you are watching this on linked out, you better go into the first comment or the first whatever or in the description of this video. Come and join us on the real video platform. And by the way, starting this spring with Frédéric, we might switch everything into X, X, Rumble, and YouTube. That's going to be the three places we're going to broadcast our amazing video podcast. So for the listener, don't pay attention. I won't even mention that I show something. But of course, if you'd like to see it by yourself, to read it by yourself at some point, I'm going to put the link of this article for as long as it's still on the... Um, medium account of Mike Beadle, it's still there. But what I did is I save all of them in PDF, ready to be retranscript into my blog, into my website. That's what I'm going to do in my spare time, but I don't have spare time at this moment, but I'll do it. But now to immortalize this, this great thinker, this great innovative mind that was Miguel Beadle, I would like to start with this post of him. And I will share my screen while I read with you and for you. Um, that's really important. Okay, once again, this application will... Uh, let's do this. And now I'm going to do some correction here. There we go. So... Without further ado, let's dive in into this nine agilities for through business agility. From Mike Beadle, and that was published on July the 8th, 2017. But you're going to see how much of actuality and even, even it's more forward than anyone who are talking shit about the real agile, the real scrum the real enterprise scrum, and the real business agility, because this is the master. He is the master. He is the genius. So let's do this. We live in the age of disruption. Therefore, we need to cope with rapid change everywhere. Our 100 years old management techniques, the Sloan management, for instance, departments, Taylorism, managing business process, etc., are simply not good enough to handle this much change and everything is pointing to more agile management everywhere, not just, not just in software development. Company management, business strategy, change management and transformation, for real, startups and new innovative business units, Portfolio management at all levels, marketing and sales, compliance, etc., etc. So you already see how much my eight years old Agile Lounge for Business Agility brand to serve you and business agility is really based on my experience with Mike. And that's why I was the first Canadian ever certified business agility coach by himself in 2018, just before he, he left this beautiful planet. So, however, with so many choices, so many frameworks, and so much advice everywhere, what are even the right questions to ask as you embark in business agility? Getting your company to be more agile requires making the right choices. In my experience, very many very many, okay, very many companies fail before they even start because they don't even ask the right questions. 
It sounds like uh, Isaac Asimov, a robot uh, professor. <laughs> Don't let that happen to you. Here is some guidance. However, don't attempt to rank or think one aspect is more important than the other. We are in the age of Agile, Steve Denning mentioned, uh, and we need to start thinking about co-evolving things together because one, once we focus on one aspect, we make a functional process out of everything. At the very least, you need to worry about these important things in your overall Agile approach. Here's the nine agilities described by Mike Beadle. One, cultural agility. Two, leadership agility. Three, agility of the Agile transformation. Oh la la, can't wait to, to read it to you. Organization design agility. Number five, framework inherent agility of the Agile framework chosen. Number six, framework genericity agility of chosen framework. Number seven, scaling agility of the Agile framework chosen. Number eight, still framework configuration agility of the Agile framework chosen. And number nine, the latest framework still, the agility of how an Agile framework is published and updated, not static, I will add. These are important things to both assess and attain. When we start our business agility journey, it's a good idea to ask these questions. How ready are we to start with business agility? And the, of course, where do we want to be? What is the desired states that your company or your team and everything want to be? So before you answer any of these questions, make sure you really understand what it takes to get there. And now for my audio lesson, I will describe a little bit. In the article, Mike put his kind of circular drawing resembling the substantion that we're going to talk later and more this month, uh, putting business agility in the center of the circle and with different satellite inside the molecule, let's say it, of culture, leadership, transformation, organizational design, and of course, the framework uh, of inherence, genericity, scaling, configuration, and publishing. Publishing to make it visual to make people aware of it. This is my Awake and Agilize with myself. And let me just see something here that I would like to try and do. Yeah, that's perfect. Let's do it like this. Let's continue. So let's dive deeper together into each of them, shall we? The nine agilities for through business agility. So the number one is cultural agility. An integral part of being agile is now each individual is is now each individual behaves. We call this the agile mindset. Everybody knows that. The agile mindset is based on how an individual behaves with participation, cooperation, collaboration, sharing, and sharing. We talked about anything of value, any knowledge is responsibility success, etc. So this behavior is supported by agile values such as focus, respect, honesty, openness, courage, and commitment. You see, Mike used agile values because for him, Scrum has been the father of the agile manifesto for software development. But bringing it up into the entire enterprise, it's become Agile values. Do you get it? Let's continue. And, and good understanding of their purpose, of these values, and what Agile is all at once, iterative, incremental, customer delighting, employee pleasing, and result-driven management. When many individuals have the same Agile mindset based on these values, we call this an Agile culture. Self-assessments here, homework for you. Give a score from 1 to 10 
on how agile you think is the culture of your team, your business unit, and even your entire company is. So you have one, two, six, and the red, seven and eight, just meet expectation of agile, and nine, 10, you surpass it. So seven, eight, of course, it's yellow, nine, 10. So give yourself, scale yourself right now. And for those who are watching on Rumble and YouTube, and maybe why not linked out, give me your score and the comment below right now. Number two, leadership agility. For agility to really work at any level, there needs to be supporting agile leadership. That is leadership that truly understands agile and how it could work at all levels. And when we, when we say leadership here, is the business owner, the board, the executive suite, everything, like any decision maker, how will they delegate or like music will teach us, invite. Okay, so let's continue. This is not only important to set example, lead by example. Understanding is key to make supporting decisions. And most large companies with non-agile leaders, very many non-agile decisions are made every day that ruin agility, that ruin the transformation. Also part of being an agile leader is to understand that a leader needs to change its management and leadership style depending on the context. Enterprise Scrum includes option for leaders while they support and grow their agile organizations. So self-assessment again for you in the comment below. Give a score from 1 to 10 on how agile you think your leadership team are for your team, supporting your team, your business unit, and your company. 1 to 6 are in the red. 7, 8 are just yellow okay. And 9, 10 are green even. You have comment? Did you comment? Your score and your appreciation? All right, let's go to number three. Agility of, of the Agile transformation. I repeat it again. Agility of the Agile transformation. Most frameworks don't have an explicit way to do their Agile transformation or change management for the true term because agile transformation we all know now that doesn't exist it could be a change management for transformation of your business a digital transformation a enhancement of your cultural setup and everything and everything so must most dismiss this important topic as of this writing agile transformations are typically very low in agility for all frameworks i repeat it again Agile transformation are typically very low in agility for all frameworks, whatever you choose. However, there are more agile options like open space agility and enterprise scrum that will bring you this kind of all at once transformation with agile. So self-assessment again, be ready to comment in the below video or send me a, any comment on my website and wherever you're listening to this. So self-assessment on agility of the Agile transformation. Give a score from 1 to 10 on how agile you think is your Agile transformation, if you are in it. So once again, 1, 2, 6 are in the red. 7, 8 are just meeting the expectation in yellow. 9 and 10, it's green even. And now, have you vote? All right, so let's move on to number four, organization design agility. According to the Global Human Capital Trends of 2016, and remember that was written in summer of 2017, so the Global Human Capital Trends of 2016, 88% of all executives interviewed say the organization of the future is the most important future trend. Oh, what does that mean? So we have a figure here, the 2017 trends by importance. Okay, so it's a kind of a Diane diagram of, of bar, of, of um, um, horizontal bar. And you have like on the left, the uh, different 
team and the percentage of total response from that global human capital trends survey. So um, the very first one is organization of the future. 88% um, says of the executive interview says this is uh, the most important future trend, and it is in that scale. But there's others like career and learning at 83%. Talent acquisition at 81%. Employee experience at 79%. Okay, that's very important to very important. And uh, performance management, it's 78%. Leadership, 78%. Now, we talked about digital HR. Not sure what they mean by that, but let's say this PNC type of digital stuff or maybe self-service and, and human resources or people care it's about 73 percent people analytics probably including psychometric tests and better talent acquisition it's 71 percent diversity and inclusion 69 percent so you know it's not the priority the augmented workforce at 63 percent and the robotic cognitive computing and what we could call artificial intelligence at 40 percent so that was about like seven eight years ago so that was the scale of it. So the most important for organization design agility is the organization of the future. They want to be a company, an organization of the future now. So, but as of today, most management consulting firms, and as he didn't know, uh, name them, I won't do this. I would like to respect the text beside of my comment or my explanation of my understanding and discussion with Mike. So, but as of today, as we all know, with the age, you said we are in the age of what again? Age of disruption. Yes. But now move forward eight years ago. Uh, we are now, uh, as you know, with the Open Leadership Network, we're going to fight against that. The edge of imposition because of this, because of this design, the lack of design agility and organization and agile transformation. So because these consulting firm and agile frameworks is the tyranny of the frameworks uh, over what we should do by common sense. Because these two things, consulting firm and the agile frameworks are, they avoid giving an answer to this important question of design agility. In fact, the only framework that I know that provide any guidance in agile organizational design is Enterprise Scrum, and I bet you that's true still today. That's why I keep it alive and I'm offering to my most innovative client and entrepreneur that I really want to achieve and become this 88% of being the future, the company of the future. So I am sure others will come. I mean, they have to. I'm here, Mike. I'm here, Mike. We are, no, we are not going to agilize departments or agilize business process. If you understand for real agility, agile organizational design is a new way to organize company. It is all at once management at all levels of scale. Okay. And this is why now we show for my audio listener, we are showing right now on this panel. And let me just verify if it's correct. This is correct. We are on the same page. So this is the one of the design proposed by Enterprise Scrum for business agility for companies of any size, by the way. Whether you are a small business of five, six to eight people or uh, with many business units, with many kind of customer segment, we could help you do these enterprise scrum business agility pattern language typonomy and ideally all hierarchy is in subsension which is they interact within each other and the layer of the hierarchy is substantive it's a kind of a decentralized and distributed at the same time because each of these sections for those who are watching uh, each of these business canvas if you want will be completely decentralized from the main goal, but they will be interacted into what subsume which, and they are cohesive in that sense. So now on organizational agility design, 
self-assessment. Be ready to comment below, my Rumbler and my YouTuber. Give a score from 1 to 10, which again, 1 to 6, you're in the red. 7, 8, you're just there. 9 to 10, you surpass it. On how agile you think is your organizational design for your team, your business unit, and your company. So it's really simple. You go in the comment, you put a number between 1 and 10 for team, business, unit, and the company as a whole. Number five, framework. One of the first framework inherent. Now, it's the inherent agility of the agile framework chosen. And we'll, we'll see why is it framework chosen. Then we get into what framework to use for business agility. For example, for software development, the inherent agility of the SAFE framework is very low. Okay, the scaling that we I'm asking you to, to scale. It only adapts every release and I for Scrum. Okay, that's what safe frameworks will do in terms of business agility or scaling. So, however, as of this writing, I don't know of any other framework for business agility other than Enterprise Scrum. And of course, since it is based on Scrum, with varying cycle times, its inherent agility is very high. All right? So self-assessment here for the inherent agility within your Agile framework chosen. Give a score from 1 to 10 in the comment below on how Agile you think is your business agility framework or approach. All right? Number six, still into the framework, the genericity of agility of chosen framework or imposed by this big firm into your C-level people and imposed below into your business unit, teams, and so on and so on. So the generosity of agility is, this is related as to how agile and breadth is your business agility framework. Huh? Do you have space for creativity and innovation? In other words, how many things can it agilize? For example, software, hardware, compliance, marketing and sales, customer segments, meaning like B2C, B2B, and so on, portfolios, management, or the entire company. So what is the breather here uh, of your chosen framework for the real business agility to scale up and scale down all at once? For example, if we take the less, which is based on Scrum as well, for product development, so less for product development, while Enterprise Scrum can agilize 50 plus activities, including company management, startups, portfolio management, business unit, customer segment, hardware, software team, the agile transformation by itself, the change management, the marketing and sales compliance, etc., etc. Okay? So, self-assessment again for the generosity of agility of your chosen framework. Give a score from 1 to 10 on how agile you think is your framework in terms of generosity, which means the application for different domains within your company and your business unit. Number 7, still in framework, the scaling agility of the agile framework chosen. So, this is the scaling agility of the business agility framework chosen. For example, in software development, some have none, like Scrum. There is no prescribed way or pattern to scale. It's really important. Within the software development domain, some have exactly one way to scale, like less or safe. They are very centralized, so they have only one way. Safe is a train, a train that go into one direction. Okay, less it's a big wall. Okay, that just push things instead of let team pulling. So, however, Enterprise Scrum provides a thousand and twenty four scaling combination, and its scaling option works outside of framework. Uh, excuse me, of software development. So, let's say that you try one of these scaling options within Enterprise Scrum and it doesn't work well, they are still one 
1023 options that you reconfigure with. So instead of with other framework, you have to either stick to one guidance, prescribe, cook your own solution or chosen framework with Enterprise Scrum. So again, that I know of these is no business agility framework that offers scaling at the business level other than Enterprise Scrum. So self-assessment here, my friend, go in the comment below and tell me, give a score from one to 10 on how agile you think is your business agility framework or approach in terms of scaling. Number eight, we're almost done and let's see the time now. Oh, that's cool, that's cool. So number eight framework, still the configuration agility of chosen framework. This is the agility associated with the preferable explicit configuration option for implementation. For example, within software development, again, Scrum is configurable, but none of the options are explicit except choosing one to four week sprint and comparison in and inside Enterprise Scrum. There are explicit configuration options for customer domains, and industries, team and roles, process, matrix, charts, scaling, added technique, etc., etc., as you want to agilize everything. So everything is explicitly configurable. Everything is configurable with Enterprise Scrum. So self assessment again, knowing that in terms of the configuration with context, by the way, give yourself a score in the comment below on 1 to 10, on how agile you think is your business agility framework or approach in term of this open configuration. And the last one of the agility for through business agility, the framework, the agility of how an agile framework is published and updated, okay? Because we don't have to get this static. It's an ongoing process of continuous improvement. So lastly, this is the agility by which the frameworks are updated and published, which is important, especially in a time of rapid change or kind of chaos. Well, here, all of the frameworks I know, sadly, including Enterprise Chrome, so it was very humble, are not all that agile. We are trying to change this. So that's an honest reflection from Mike here. So be honest in the comment below and tell me on a scale of one to 10, where one is very poor, seven, eight is just okay, and nine, 10 you surpass. How agile you think is your business agility framework or approach in terms of its publishing and updating, showing it to everyone and be able to not being static and confident that we don't need to change anymore. It's done. It's a done deal. So warning, my little pussy, miss any of these nine agilities and you will have problems in your business agility transformation and ongoing management. So choose carefully your future, your existence, your success, and your survival as a business may depend on this choice. I hope you find this guidance useful, at least to the point where you are asking hmm, the right questions. And remember, part of being agile is the ability to make corrections once you find more or better information. So don't be afraid to reroute your agile journey even if you had already started. Mike Beadle, Chief, Chief Executive Officer of the Enterprise Crime Incorporated. Mike, we love you. I missed you. And so that was it. That was my first attempt to immortalize Enterprise Crime for business agility and the work of Mike, the innovation of Mike that I still try to do this nine agility to publish it and update it 
And I really love what Daniel Mizik did over the Open Leadership Network, taking some of this base ground ideas of this enterprise crumb system. It's my perspective. I'm not saying that Daniel did it, but Daniel was one of the uh, person around Mike, the Beatles guy, right? He even did a t-shirt for the Chicago conference in 2017. So, and this is why I'm friend with, uh, with Daniel because Mike always tell me, I have to meet music. You're both kind of crazy mole guy. Yeah. But who knows? Now we're going to try something together, Daniel and I, and creating the Institute of Open Leadership Network, promoting the invitation base, decentralization. And with Suryu, we're going to keep alive this substantial architecture and hierarchy, uh, that part of the great innovative proposition of value from Mike Beadle. So I hope you liked it, guys. Um, so if you liked it, of course, you give me a thumbs up um, and you could share it to anyone who is starting uh, his agility journey, uh, especially if you really work in software with Scrum, Scrum with XP, Scrum with pair programming, Scrum with, uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to say that, Scrum with whatever you want because it's, conf it's really configurable for me. That's why I do believe in Enterprise Scrum because Enterprise Scrum is the simplicity and the generosity uh, as we just saw a little bit here. And uh, so if you liked it, I will continue to do this uh, because for me, when I'm really busy with my capacity is less, but I still want to maintain a connection with you every Friday at 12 noon Eastern, 11 Central, 6 o'clock in the Eurozone time. So, and having the podcast alive for my joggers and, and, and people out there that I really appreciate when you send me some Bitcoins and you purchase me some coffee because I love coffee, but I will have to be careful with my health though. Mm. So, and if you'd like, if you like what you heard too, and if you want to be an organization of the future, I was certified by this gentleman I work with him. He mentored me. He brought me to meet executive at CVS Scarmark and some other company that I cannot name here right now. So if you'd like to become our client at the Agile Lounge, go to agile-lounge.com and take your first half an hour discovery kind of chit-chat coffee and, and let's see what we could do together. It will be a pleasure to serve you. And uh, so happy new moon on this Friday the 9th. And as you know, I did pre-record it because I'm probably somewhere in the sky coming back to Montreal or what have you. I don't know these days. I'm so busy, but I'm so happy as well. I hope you have uh, also a great day. And, um, and as always, remember who you truly are. You are wonderful. You are powerful. And you are free to be whoever you want it to be and to do whatever you wanted to do and respect of one another. Have a great weekend and see you next week.